Hi everybody, it's Nancy and I wanted to do a comparison of some different papers today with stamping and ink blending. So we are going to try out some uh, Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock which I believe is very similar to Stampin' Up's 80 pound Whisper White and Gina K's Pure Luxury Cardstock Layering White Weight. And I'm also going to throw in, which is a different texture, um, the Marcos Paper Classic Crest Cardstock by Nina Solar White. This is 110 pound. Um, so this paper is a little different. And I think I also have the Recollection, Recollection, Recollections brand, which is Michael's brand um, paper. But... I can tell you in just um, touching the papers, this is the Recollections Michaels brand. It just feels like regular cardstock. The Classic Crest by Nina 110-pound solar cardstock is a much heavier version cardstock. This you would probably use for a base of your cards. Now these three, the Gina K, the Stampin' Up! Whisper White and the Nina 80 Pound Solar White are all pretty similar. I mean, they're all the same weight. They're 80 pound, but they're much smoother. Like, there's less tooth to them. They're definitely smoother. I would say the Stampin' Up! Whisper White, you can feel a little bit, but it's almost like, I don't want to say they're coated, but they're just a much smoother paper. So let's just see how they stamp out. So the first stamp that I have is off of the new, I just got this set, Stampin' Up! Floral Phrases. It is this phrase right here for all the thoughts, thoughtful things you do. And I did pick this one because it has a print and a script. And the ink that I'm going to use is just regular um, Black Onyx VersaFine ink. So let's see how that works out. And what I'll do is I'll stamp it, I'll put it aside, and then we'll check to see what the results are. Are. And this is the, and I'm sorry it's upside down, guys. Classic Crest by Nina, 110 pound. And this is a brand new stamp. I probably should have um, stamped it off a couple times. And I have my little stamp scrubber on the side here. This is the Recollections brand. And I have my little stamp mat underneath so I know that I'm getting a good impression. Impression. This is the Gina K. The next one is the Stampin' Up! Whisper White. And I hope you guys can see this. I have a new camera set up today and I hope this is all being filmed on here. And this is the Nina 80 pound. So because that is the VersaFine ink, I want to give that a second to just kind of dry and set in and see how the pigment ink goes in. In the meantime, I'm also going to stamp from that same stamp set the flower here. There's some shading it looks like in the flower. I haven't stamped it yet, so you know what? I'm going to, and I'm going to use with that the new uh, Lawn Fawn Pink Plastic Flamingo dye ink. And this one I'm going to stamp off on some scrap paper first because it's the first time I'm using it. Alright, so let's see how that looks with some shading. So this is the Nina 80 pound solar white. And I'm going to scrub this stamp each time. Re-inking. Now we're going to try the Stampin' Up! Whisper White. Gina K. Michael's Recollections brand. And 
And the last one is the Classic Crest by Nina Solar White. Okay, another test I have while they are drying is the marker test. I know a lot of us do some coloring, so I have here a Spectrum Noir um, alcohol marker. This is in the color DR4, and then a Copic marker, Royal Blue B28. And I want to use um, the chiseled end on these just to see when I draw a straight line how the paper reacts to the ink. And again, we'll just go back and check those in a minute. I probably should have stamped out an image and colored it in, but I'm trying to make this a pretty quick video here. And the last thing I want to do is I have some Distress Ink here in Tumbled Glass and Twisted Cintron. And I just want to see how, how they blend. Now, I do some ink blending. I don't do a lot of it. I know some of you are really good at it. I'm not so great at it, so I don't do a whole bunch of it. I'm going to pull the stamp pad out for this because I want it on my, my mat here. And I hope you guys can see this. Let's see here. So I'm going to start with the Tumbled Glass. And I'm just going to start off the mat and kind of bring it in. This is the Recollections brand. Again with the Gina K. And just to give you guys a quick tip, one of the tricks that I learned at a stamping show years ago was to take a scallop punch and punch out a couple of them. So I have three scallop punches here and I've just kind of stuck them all together. And you can do a pretty neat little cloud scene with these. And then you just kind of move it down, angle it, move it over a little bit. And this is a quick and easy sky background that you can do. It looks like clouds. And obviously if you have different size punches, it's gonna look differently, but I love this technique and I thought I'd pass that on to you guys. Moving on, this is the classic, classic crest. So this is much harder to blend on. I can tell you just from feeling it that it's really toothy and the, the sponge just wants to grab right onto the paper. It does not want to blend. That's going to leave a real streaky look. Nina Solar White. And I usually get my supplies from the stamp show that comes once a year. It's Heirloom Stamp Show. It comes to our area once a year. We don't have a lot of... Um, 
scrapbooking stores in my area. We have the big brands like Michael's, Joann's, and Hobby Lobby, AC Moore. But a lot of the stuff that I get is once a year when the scrap it, scrapbook show or the rubber stamp show comes around. I do order some stuff from Simon Says Stamp, Gina K. I just ordered some stuff from Tupelo Designs. And of course, Cat at Cat Scrappiness. Um, always great service from, from these guys and great prices. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have here. All right, so this is the Stampin' Up! Whisper White. I hope you guys can see this. hope the camera zooms in okay. The first stamp, the um, font is very crisp and clear. Um, you can see with the dye ink there, it looks to me like there was some shading. I don't know if some of that's the stamp or the paper just absorbing the dye ink. The Copic markers look okay. It doesn't look like there was any bleeding there. And the blending came out really nice, I think, in the Distress Inks. So the Stampin' Up! Whisper White, in my opinion, is a very good stamping paper. It absorbs the ink well. It's crisp, and it's a good quality paper. And like I said, it does have. It, it's very smooth. It doesn't really have a gloss to the she um, a sh glossy sheen, so it's not like a glossy paper, but it's a very nice paper. Um... The closest to that, I would say, is probably the Nina 80 Pound Solar White. The Nina does look like it's a little more white. It's not by very much, but they almost feel the, almost the, exactly the same weight. And in looking at the stamping, again, very crisp on the black VersaFine ink. Now, see, there's more definition here, I think, in the, in the rose stamp than in the Stampin' Up. There's definitely, like, you can see the print lines on here where the Whisper White kind of absorbed it a little more. The colors on the markers look like they are pretty clear and straight. No, it doesn't look like there's any bleeding. And I could tell when I was doing the blending, it was very smooth with the blending. I don't know if you guys can see that. And this is the Stampin' Up, the first one I showed you guys. But really, the biggest difference is in the rose stamp. It's definitely clearer here than here. I'm going to throw into that mix the Gina K compared to the Stampin' Up. Now the Gina K, I smudged it here, I guess. But the it is pretty clear with the black ink, with the VersaFine. There is definitely more absorption in the ink on the rose stamp and also in the markers. You can just tell that the markers absorb. There's a slight bleeding, but not enough that I don't think anyone noticed. I would probably stamp out a memento stamp and color it in with the Copic markers to see how much difference there would be in the two. And the blending was pretty smooth. So Honestly, guys, I, I have all three of these papers, and I use them all interchangeably. I don't pick one over the other. Whatever I have on hand, whatever is closest for me to reach, and whatever is on sale at the time is what I stock up on. But I use all three of these interchangeably. It's personal preference. I don't think they feel any different. I don't really think that they stamp any differently. So honestly, if you're trying to figure out which one's the best one for you, I would say it's whichever one you can get your hands on. Um... They're, they're all very similar papers. Now, the regular brand paper, this non-coated, toothy paper, we have the Recollections brand, Michaels. Um, it did stamp, but you can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, it did smudge a little bit. Now, I don't know if some of that was me from stamping it, but it did smudge a little bit. You can almost see where the ink kind of soaked in and moved out a little. It's the same thing with the dye inks here on the on the flower. It, it soaked in and kind of blended or spread out a little bit. And with the marker. So I wouldn't say this is a good brand to stamp with. It was also harder for me to do the blending. You can see the lines here with the blending with the Distress inks. So 
This paper I would say use as your practice paper or if you want to use this as your layering paper, if you're going to maybe die cut with it or if you're doing something with the kids. This isn't your high quality stamping paper. This is practice paper is what I would say. Or if you're doing a quick throw together that no one's going to care what you're doing, arts and crafts, that's what I would use this paper for. The classic crest is pretty much the same thing. This 110 pound cardstock is very toothy. It's very thick. This is your base weight. This is what you make your cards out of. I wouldn't use this for a top weight and stamping on um, just because of how heavy it is. It did stamp nicely, but again, you can see where the ink kind of went in and bled a little bit. The same thing with the rows here. You can definitely see it on the Copic markers. They they stamp, They went on there and they, they bled. Um, you can just see how it spread. And then the blending was very difficult on this. And again, it's a very toothy paper, so it's not going to be as smooth for stamping, for blending. Um, this is more of a base weight, 110 pound. This is what you make your base bases out of. So for bases, for... Um, that's what I would use these papers for, for actual stamping, especially if you're doing Copic coloring or detailed stamping, a uh, top weight. I would pick any one of these three, and again, they're they're interchangeable. The Nina 80-pound Solar White, the Stampin' Up Whisper White, and again, the Gina K Pure White um, Luxury. So there's my video, guys. Again, I'm sorry it's upside down. I'm going to try to get that fixed here. I'm using a new setup. But hopefully this answers questions for you guys. If you think you need all three, in my opinion, I would say no. I don't think you need all three. I think they're all about the same. They're all interchangeable. I would say whatever you can get cheapest. Um, but comment below if you have a different feeling about it. Um, I think they're all great papers, and you can use any one of them for stamping or copic coloring or blending. That's all I have. Have a good day, guys. Keep on stamping.